Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We're going to start things off with a track and field, or no track and field, because fans were left disappointed after the organizing committee of the Grenada Invitational announced late Monday evening that the meet has been canceled. The organizers in a statement said that the socio-economic challenges were the determining factor. Here's a statement put out by the organizers. Despite the best efforts of the board of directors, and the local organizing team of the Grenada Invitational. The synergy, the enthusiasm, the energy, and the commitment to produce a once-in-a-generation event did not materialize. With time running out, the board of directors of the Grenada Invitational took the painful decision at a meeting late Monday, the 27th of May, to cancel the 2024 Grenada Invitational, as well as round up for good the franchise and brand that is Grenada Invitational. We are extremely pleased that we were able to bring to Grenada quality world-class athletic competition. We would like to commend and extend a hearty thank you to all who contributed in one way or the other to the 2017, 2018 and 2019 editions of the Grenada Invitational. Now, the world and Olympic champion Kirana James, two-time double Olympic sprint champion Elaine thompson Hero were among the over 100 athletes set to take part in the event which was programmed to be live on Sportsmax as well. So a shocking development late last night, uh, Mariah, and hugely disappointing because um, in the Caribbean, we have had you know, countries like Grenada in this case, uh, Jamaica, Bermuda, the Bahamas, uh, giving their, their local fans a taste of global high-class competition and uh, Grenada falling off the wagon here in a a sudden decision, we have to say, because this, this has been shocking for us. Yeah, you say disappointing, Lance, and disappointing in many different fronts, because, of course, we can speak from broadcast um, standpoint. I know our team was, of course, working, getting ready, putting things in place to, of course, head across the Grenada to ensure that we did our first-class coverage as we tend to do all the time. So, of course, our team was already putting that in place. So, for me, that came as a shock where that is concerned. The athletes as well, we have to think about them. They have been preparing, of course, looking forward to this. This is an Olympic year. All of these meets are very, very important, Lance, because it will help them to be able to gauge where they are at right now in their progress as they get ready for the Olympics, which we know world-class event and all eyes will be glued to that. Um, to me, I will say that the fact that the decision was made at the board meeting on May 27, I think the organizers, of course, were in limbo. They've waited too long to, of course, drop this press release. And many of the people that our team would have reached out today, I know Gerard Morrisili, one of our producers here and presenters at Sportsmax, has been calling around Lance to try to get people to come on the show to, of course, shed some light, give all viewers the opportunity to know what really happened. Because for me, when things happen and they're not very clear, it causes a lot of he say, she say confusion. And I think this is one of that, um, one of those situations. What I get from the press release, for good. Mm. This might be the end of it for good, yeah. based on the wording of it. I'm hoping that I'm wrong, but that's the sense that I'm getting. And to me, a lot of athletes will suffer because this is one of the invitational meets that we've seen some of the best talents come through. Of course, we've seen them develop. We've seen them rise. Names like, I mean, you listed a couple, but Shelly Ann Fraser Price, Karani James. So for me, it's disappointing, but not just disappointing, but in so many different levels. And I have a massive problem with the timeline. The fact that you decide today for tomorrow. Yeah. And I think, to be frank, I think it's been an embarrassing last couple of hours for the, the organizing committee of the Grenada Invitational. And uh, I, I, I would think that part of the reason why we've had difficulty getting someone from the organizing committee or at least some uh, track and field expert from, from Grenada to uh, have an input on the show today is an illustration that it, it's an embarrassing development for Grenada. And as you correctly pointed out, Mariah, coming really late because it is obvious that they were having difficulties in recent weeks and they may have been trying, as the release said, um, their utmost to try to, to keep the meat on. 
And as you referenced just now, the franchise has folded, which means that uh, the meet could very well not happen again unless uh, another franchise is resuscitated and the effort to, to you know, revive the event. Because as you pointed out as well, um, well, there are not many of these meets throughout the Caribbean. And um, athletes, especially in a year like this, where it's the Olympic year, we're just over two months from the start of the Olympics. Um, well, just under two months, really. Um, it, is, it is a key period here for these athletes. Uh, to be specific, we can look at Elaine thompson Hero, the double-double yeah. sprint champion who um, had a tame opener uh, last weekend and would have been looking forward to this Grenada Invitational to probably step up on the effort that she had last weekend. And uh, now that meet is taken off the roster for her. So she would have to find other events now to try and sharpen herself for the late June Jamaica trials, which are expected to be hot. Um, the uh, Jamaican track and field landscape is so competitive that uh, while athletes, uh, even the elite ones, look ahead to the Olympic Games, they first have to look to the, the Jamaica trials because you have to get there first or get through that first before you go on to the majors, the global events, which come up later on in the summer. But disappointing for me that we haven't been able to nail down someone from the Grenada Organizing Committee to, to spell out the difficulties that, we have, we've, that they have experienced in having to make this drastic decision and uh, the decision coming just over a week before the event was scheduled to be staged, which means that athletes and officials and fans who would have been traveling to Grenada would have already booked tickets. Well, that's what I'm go. thinking. Yeah. So, you know, I, I take your point that if they were having difficulties, um, it, it would have been better for everyone. It would have if been the professional. Decision, yeah, the decision was made a lot earlier than it has. But I, I gather that the reason why they, they, they took so long to make the decision is because they were trying to Agreed. leave no stone unturned in trying to make sure the event happens. But obviously a financial issue because these events are not um, cheap to put on. But... Um, yeah, I, this one hit me, <laughs> hit me like a big brick last night yeah. when, when I saw the story. And the last event came in 2019. I was doing some research and reading up, and, you know, one of the angles that were presented was the fact that, you know, since the COVID-19 pandemic, um, they have, it, it has been really difficult for them to, of course, come out of that loss that they would have suffered and just to try to get the meat back on track. And to me, I get all of that. Things happen, you know, it's very difficult getting sponsors from time to time. But I just didn't like how messy it was done. And then, you know, we sit on this show from time to time. And I always say our job is, of course, to answer to the viewers. That's why we're here, right? Every day to, of course, be able to give the viewers um, an explanation. And, of course, the fact that we were supposed to be one of the broadcast partners. We're not able to get in touch with anybody. Hopefully, after they see this segment, we'll have one of them on so just get, put some light, you know, shed yeah. some light. Let us know that, you know, at least they tried up until the last minute, but it just couldn't happen. Yeah, and the illustration of how big this meet has been over the years, the three stagings that we've seen, ESPN had covered this event before. Correct. And ESPN won't, won't cover events that are, are, are not major. And Correct. the fact that they have attached themselves as broadcast partners in the past tells you that the Grenada Invitational had, had risen to a, a pretty, pretty, pretty high <laughs> status in, in track and field, certainly in this side of the world, in the, in the Western hem Hemisphere. Justin Gatlin has, has competed there before, which it would be one of the reasons why ESPN would want to be interested yeah. in there because um, he's a, a, a top-flight U.S. athlete and ESPN will follow the Americans. And uh, there were Americans scheduled to be at this meet in 2024. Um, but as we said, that's now history. We'll watch this um, development because uh, there is the, based on the statement, the possibility that the meet will, will never happen again. But, you know, there are times when franchises can, can rebuild and resuscitate something as important as this. So the Grenada Invitational set for the 6th of June at the Kirani James Stadium in St. George's of Grenada has been called off. And at the moment, we are unsure whether this event will ever happen again. This is an Olympic year, and we watch the track and field space closely because athletes are getting themselves ready for Paris. Grenada won't be a part of that build-up, though, for sure. We go to break. We'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.